Now, see, and the fellow that put it on says, I'm getting 30% increase. Well, so I got the car back and tested it myself. When I pulled up to the pump, this particular Mercury Sable in 1995, it's always been real funny. When you when the little when the pump clicks off, you're supposed to stop, it says don't overfill it. Well, if I'd have done data then I'd have got a thirty or forty percent increase. But I says, uh uh. I says, I am gonna keep popping gas out of this thing till it flows over the top. I got four more gallon in it. I got four more gallon in it. And uh, and then when I did my data that he said he got thirty percent increase in. I didn't get any. So, I'm not knocking it. I'm here to learn. I just want a system that works. I am open-minded. If you've done it, I believe you. But a lot of people... Now, I'm really more out of a psychological research than mechanical research. Uh, there is a thing called the Hawthorne effect. Uh, when, you're, when you're researching something, you kind of get excited and you want to gain so much that you almost trick yourself into thinking you do. I'm not saying this is happening. I'm just here to learn and I can't make it. I've told you all I know about hydrogen enrichment. Now, if you want to hear later how to run engines completely off sun and water, we'll talk about that. Well, but actually, I, I won't. Honest with you, not later. This is, this is a forum of because all of us, our end goal, our mecca, is 100 percent, right? Yeah. You know, so let's. Uh, I mean, we we are yeah. definitely on your wavelength on that. We'd love to hear right now, um, of you know exactly that. Because the what beef we have is, let's face it, the oil companies have controlled us for so many years, and now T Bone Pickens and other ones say, oh, natural gas is the new wave. Well, why? Because you can still pump that natural gas. I use the example between Nikolai Tesla and Edison. Edison had to find a way to be able to charge us for electricity. Nikolai Tesla wanted to give it away. Nikolai Tesla ended up broke. <laughs> Edison was a billionaire. Okay, so, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, recognizing there's nothing wrong with making money in the industry and on, on uh, you know, even though I spent uh, the last 10 years in Russia, but basically, I'm, I'm not against that. I just want to make sure that when you're on the wavelength of, it's about time that we know that solar, wind, geothermal, uh, you know, hydrogen in combination can remove from the grid, get us back on track, stop the obsession with oil fuel, you know, hydrocarbon fuels. And so that's why when you say later, no, this is what the forum's for. I mean, you have probably 100 people that want to know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I do. So, okay. uh, let, me, let, let me again apologize one more time that I want to apologize anymore. Okay. <laughs> I, I will not tell you anything today that 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 is cheaper than gasoline at a dollar eighty per gallon. I'm just going to be honest That's with you. True. Uh, I testified before Congress two years ago before the uh, House Energy Committee, and I told them I said probably the best thing to happen in this country is for gas to get to five dollars a gallon and stay there for two years. That's there would be fault. so much stuff invented <laughs> That's right. that That's everything absolutely. would come about, and, 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 and the congressman jumped <laughs> in and said, "Well, I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Ricketts, but if it got that high, none of us would have a job." So, so another one of my philosophies is there's 999 ways something won't, won't work. There's one way it is. So let me tell you what I'm doing. And listen, let me tell you, I'm for y'all on this hydrogen enrichment. I just want, I just want it to work, and I can't get it to work. Repeatable results. Yeah, repeat, yeah, repeatable, yeah, yeah, repeatable right. results. Right. And you that's got there that, please, don't waste anomalies. my flight down here. Please tell me, because I am, oh, one thing, I am open-minded. I will listen to you. Sure. All right, let me tell you what I'm doing. Uh, my goal, my passion, has always to be in running engines completely off sun and water. I mean, that's just, I've had that passion since a kid. Uh, I ran my first engine off of uh, pure water on October the 14th, 1987. I had to do it. Uh, I looked in a McMaster car catalog and I bought a dental torch. It says, safe enough to run in any high rise in New York. I said, well, by gosh, if they can do teeth and braces off of hydrogen, I can run an engine off hydrogen. Yes, so I took that dental torch, took a little eight-horse Briggs engine, converted it to propane, uh, uh, stripped that electrolysis, that dental torch down to the basic electrolysis <laughs> part of it, and uh, it didn't work. I said, well, maybe it's not getting enough hydrogen. So with the big high-tech budget I had, I got a balloon and two pieces of plywood. 
So, uh, so, so, so we put the hydrogen and the two pieces of plywood, and by gosh, it ran for eight seconds. That's it. Well, uh, we got more high tech. The next day, we got a bigger balloon and a bigger piece of plywood, and we ran it for two minutes. All right. Well, I asked myself, have I created a pseudo hydrogen bomb? So I took that balloon outside my shop and ignited it, and gosh, the building shook. <laughs> I said, and that's what happened to you yesterday. <laughs> see, see when, when you have hydrogen and oxygen together, you, you, it's not the hydrogen bomb that ended World War II, but it is explosive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and back to my ag days, we used to give demonstrations. Of, a, of, a, of the danger of a settling welding, yeah. where you put a settling in one balloon, oxygen in another balloon, and gas oxygen in the other. Well, the gas itself is uh, it would just be a little fireball. The oxygen would just, but even a settling balloon the size of a beach ball would oh, blow yeah. all the windows out of here. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's what you got with hydrogen. Well, that little experiment was a very important because because with my work, not yours now, which which is. Uh, oxyhydrogen or brown gas or whatever. Uh, we knew we were fooling around with the bomb. So I had to come up with a, a process to uh, um, so that the hydrogen be separated from the oxygen. So, so what was out there was a solid polymer electrolysis unit. Now a solid polymer electrolysis unit in, water comes in, water comes out, but it separates the hydrogen and the oxygen. Now that, that's what I had to have uh, because we ran a hydrogen on a M Farmall, backfires. We ran it on a Mustang too, backfires. But back to that little balloon thing we did, what we did, the engine that we built to set the speed record at Salt Flats, we got a KA24 Nissan uh, engine. We selected that engine because it had two intake valves per cylinder and one exhaust valve. Now again, using our big high-tech budget, we used JB Well and built a wall between the two intakes. So we so we bought we brought the hydrogen in through one intake and the atmospheric oxygen through the other intake. So it never got together until it was on the head of that piston right there. So that was the basis of our original engine. Gosh, I give three presentations this week. That engine has never failed to start in 18 years, except for one time, and the guy that built it, I called him back in, it was a little connection he did in two minutes. So yeah, it works and it sounds good. Now, and this is the same issue that y'all are having with the uh, carbureted vehicles and the computer vehicles. Now, my vehicle, we stripped out all the stuff and it had no computer on it. So we did okay. But since we've been working with vehicles lately is that I am having a computer issue to running on pure hydrogen. Uh, we have a Toyota for sale. I selected it because the internet said it'd get 44 miles a gallon. And gosh, I could have brought that thing down here today and conned all of you. <laughs> it, 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 did, it did great in first gear. It, great, it did great in second gear but in third year it had no power. Uh, and that's the, that's the issue we've been having. Something about hydrogen, pure hydrogen, not, right. not your right. stuff, okay. right. yep. that does not have the power. There, there's also a dead spot in hydrogen. Even the car that I'm talking about, we, we built the Nissan, when you change gears, there, there's a little dead gap, and I don't know enough to know what that is. Mm -hmm. 